Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will be discussing the bucket sort algorithm in data structures. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. At first, we will understand what exactly is a bucket sort algorithm. Next, we will understand the working principles of bucket sort algorithm. Followed by that, we will look at the pseudocode of bucket sort algorithm. Next, we will understand the bucket sort algorithm's complexities. Then, we will compare the bucket sort algorithm with other existing sorting algorithms. Finally, we will wind up the session by learning the various applications of bucket sort algorithms. So, I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now, Let's get started with our first concept, that is, what exactly is a bucket sort algorithm? So, the bucket sort algorithm divides the unsorted array into several groups known as buckets. So, each bucket is sorted using any suitable sorting algorithm or recursively applying the same bucket sort algorithm. I know it, it's a little complicated to understand. So, let's go through an example. So, on my screen, we have an example of an array consisting of numerical elements that is 12, 6, 37, 29, 11, 35, 21, and 22. Now, we will create some buckets with different ranges. So, here we have different buckets ranging from 0 to 7, 8 to 15, 16 to 23, 24 to 31, and finally, the last bucket with range 32 to 39. So, 6 will be stored in the first bucket, followed by that 11 and 12 will be stored in the second bucket, followed by that we have 21 and 22 stored in the third bucket, followed by that we have 29 in the fourth bucket and finally the last two elements which are 37 and 35 stored in the last bucket. In the next stage, all the elements are sorted according to an order that might be ascending or descending. In our case, we have the ascending order. So, the final result will be 6, 11, 12, 21, 22, 29, 35, and 37. So, this is how the bucket sort algorithm works in real time. Now, the next topic, that is, working off a bucket sort algorithm in a detailed way. So now we know the briefing of a bucket sort algorithm. Now let's learn the working of bucket sort algorithm in depth. Suppose we have an array consisting of decimal values or floating values as the input. So the first element is 0 0.47. Next we have 0 0.39, 0 0.23, 0 0.55, 0 0.29, 0 0.41, 0 0.59 and finally 0 0.31. Then, we will create an array of size 10 and store 0 in each block. And each block of an array is used as a bucket for sorting the elements. Next, we have step 2. Insert the elements into buckets from the array and all elements are inserted as per the range of the bucket. Buckets ranging from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, up to n minus 1 to n. Here, n is the number of elements in an array. So, for our example, 0 0.23 will be multiplied by 10, which is the size of an array, and that gives us 2.3, approximately equal to 2. So, finally, we will insert 0 0.23 into the bucket number 2. In exact, we will insert other elements into other respective buckets. Followed by that, we have step 3. Elements of each bucket are sorted using the stable sorting algorithms. And finally, the step 4. In step 4, all the sorted elements of each bucket will be gathered and represented in the form of an array. As pseudocode is an informal programming description that does not require any strict programming language syntax, similarly, we will understand it effortlessly. So, in the pseudocode, first we will create n empty buckets. Next, we will insert all the array elements into buckets by multiplying the size of an array. We have to keep doing this for every array element as we understood this in working of the bucket sort algorithm. After that, we have to sort individual buckets using insertion sort. 
and finally we will concatenate all the sorted buckets next we will learn about the complexities of bucket sort algorithm first we will see about time complexity so talking about the time complexity we usually have three cases to summarize the time complexity so first we have the best case so that the best case is o of n plus k next we have the average case that is o of n into n and finally we have the worst case that is o of n here n is the total number of elements to be sorted and k is the number of buckets so let us understand all the three cases one by one so first we have the best case so the best case occurs when all the elements are uniformly distributed in the bucket with an equal number of elements in each bucket if insertion sort is used to sort the bucket sort algorithm then overall time complexity is o of n plus k o of n complexity is for making the buckets and o of k complexity is for sorting all the elements after understanding the best case now we will see how the worst case occurs in the bucket sort algorithm the worst case occurs when there are elements of close range in the array they are likely to be placed in the same bucket it makes the complexity depend on the sorting algorithm used to sort the elements of the buckets complexity becomes worse when all the elements are in reverse order and if insertion sort is used for sorting then time complexity becomes o of n into n and lastly we will learn how the average case occurs in a bucket sort algorithm the average case occurs when the elements are randomly distributed in the array it occurs even when the elements are distributed in uniform way bucket sorts run at the linear time the average case holds true until the sum of bucket sort sizes is linear and in the total number of elements next we will see about the space complexity so the space complexity of all the bucket sort algorithms is o of n plus k lastly we have stability so talking about stability so yes the bucket sort algorithm is stable after understanding the complexity of bucket sort algorithm now we will compare the bucket sort algorithm with other algorithms so first we will compare the counting sort algorithm bucket sort can be worked as a generalization of counting sort algorithm and if each bucket has size 1 then the bucket sort degenerates to counting 0 the variable size of bucket sort algorithm allows it to use o of n memory instead of o of m memory where m stands for the distinct value that gives counting sort o of n plus 1 worst case behavior next we will compare the bucket sort algorithm with quick sort bucket sort with two buckets is a practical version of the quick sort where the pivot value always selects the median value of the value range another meaning of choosing the pivot in quick sort such as a randomly selected pivot makes it more resistant to clustering it in the input distribution after that we have the merge sort the n way merge sort algorithm starts by distributing the list into n sub lists and sorting each one then the sub lists created by merge sort have overlapping ranges and cannot be recombined by a simple concatenation bucket sort lastly we have one more sorting algorithm that is radix sort for comparison top down radix sort can be a particular case of bucket sort where both range of values and the number of buckets has contained the power of 2 this approach can accelerate the scatter phase since we only need to examine each element's prefix of bit representation to determine a bucket at last we have one more topic to learn that is the applications of bucket sort algorithm the bucket sort algorithm consists of two main applications first by using bucket sort algorithm input is uniformly distributed on the range and second by using bucket sort algorithm there are floating point values now let us go through a practical demonstration of bucket sort algorithm now on my screen we have an example for bucket sort algorithm so we will begin with the header files followed by that we will define a function namely bucket sort algo this particular function is to implement a bucket sort algorithm in the function's argument there will be an array namely arr and a variable num which will store the number of elements in an array after that we will define two counter variables which are i and j 
and declare one more array, namely array 1, with the same size of an ARR array. So this particular second array will be used for displaying all the elements in the array 1. We will have a for loop which will run from index 0 to the entire size of an array and for this array we will use the variable i as the counter variable. We will have another for loop to print all the repeated numbers with frequency in an array. We will run another for loop from index 0 to the last element of both the arrays and elements of array and array 1 will assign to ARR array. Now we will exit from both the loops and now we will enter into the main function where we will declare an array namely array with the size of 100 and two variables which are num and i. Next, we will ask the user to enter several elements of an array using printf function and now the user will enter number of elements and we will scan that using the scanf function. Now, we will ask the user to enter the elements of an array using printf function and the entered elements will be scanned using the scanf function. And next, we will print a before sorting and an array after sorting using for loops by calling the packets.algo function. And in this function, we will pass the name of an array that is an array and the size of an array that is num. Now, let us try to execute this program and see the output. So there you go, the program got successfully executed. Now let us try to enter the number of elements, that is 5. Now let us enter all the 5 elements, 2, 3, 1, 4 and 5. So the array before sorting was 2, 3, 1 and 4, 5. Then the array got sorted using packet sort algorithm and the resultant array is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in ascending order. Now, with that, we have come to an end of this session on bucket sort algorithm. If you have any queries regarding the topics covered in this session or if you need the code that is executed in this particular session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below. And our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.